tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. All right, go ahead and have a seat. And although it's more formal than normal, given that Mr. Bryan's going to be sitting, it may be easier for me to sit down. I don't want him to think I'm talking down at him. No, that's fine. Can hear you. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Bryan, uh, where are you currently residing? Glenn County Detention Center. How long have you been there, sir? I think about 18 months. Would you describe your incarceration as oppressive? I'm sorry? Would you describe your incarceration as oppressive? Yes, sir. Uh, and by that, you mean no disrespect to the sheriff, do you? No, no. Can you describe for the court your daily routine over the past 18 months, approximately 18 months, 17 months, whatever it is? Uh, well, except, as you know, the last three weeks we've been here, but before that it's, uh, uh, you get up at five o'clock, um, try to get uh, your breakfast, um, certain, you have a certain hour that you come out a day so I'm locked down for 23 hours other than that. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, are you telling the court that you've basically been in lockdown or solitary confinement for the entire time you've been incarcerated? For the most part, yes, sir. All right. And by that, you're telling the court that you spend 23 hours a day in an individual cell. That's correct. Um, you don't have a bunk mate? No, sir. Okay. And could you describe briefly for the court that cell? Is it paneled? Is it um, sheetrock or is it cinder block? No, sir. It's cinder block, probably about eight by twelve, something like that. Eight by twelve, you think? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the toilet that you use is stainless steel. Correct. Uh, uh, are there any windows to the outside world in this room? No, sir. Okay. Um, are there any windows to your room at all? The exterior room that I can see out to, there is a sun <coughs> room. Okay. You know. So there is a glass panel in the door of your cell? Yeah, probably six inches wide, 36 inches tall, something like that. And for 23 hours a day, the only daylight you can see is if you look at that that window to see sunlight coming in a skylight in the, yep. in the big part of the building yes correct um, do you have a television in your room no not in my room is there a television in your pot there is in the pot and how big a television is that 30 inches maybe okay. and how far away is that from your door probably 30 foot 40 right. foot do you have a remote for this television? No, sir. All right. So do you have any other source of news or information other than watching that 30-inch TV from some distance away? No. All right. And when you have your meals, you indicated you have several meals a day? Uh, yes. Breakfast and at lunch we get a hot meal and then a bag dinner. Now, are you going down to a cafeteria somewhere for those, or is that food being brought to you? No, it comes to my room, to yeah. myself. And that's for your own protection, am I correct? Correct. The, this solitary confinement, this lockdown, is not a result of disciplinary action by the sheriff. It's a reflection of the need to provide your personal safety. Yes, sir. OK. Um, do you have a shower in your room? No, sir. Where's the shower? It's, you know, at the bottom of the pod, community shower, I guess you want to call it. All right. Can you take a shower whenever you feel like it? No, sir. How many showers a day are you allowed? One in a 24-hour period. All right. Uh, uh, well, I say that. That's what it's supposed to be. Sometimes it runs out to about close to 36 hours. Now, is there a, a specific time, set time every day when you get to shower? Not at all. No, it could be. It could be 8:30 in the morning, or it could be 4:30 a.m. in the morning. I take it other people in your pod are also in protective custody. Yes, sir. That's what that pod is. Which means that the people in protection can't fraternize with.
with each other either. Am I correct? Nothing. So how many showers are there? Four or five. Okay, but only one can be used at a time by, yes. the, by people in protective custody. Correct. So the sheriff has to rotate everyone in protective custody to the showers one at a time through the day. That's, that's right. And in order to be fair, the detention center rotates y'all through at different times of the day. That's right. So your shower might be at 3 o'clock in the morning. Correct. Okay. Uh, and uh, during that hour that you're out, you can also walk about the common area? That's right. Um, now, since you've been detained at the Glen County Detention Center, to be fair, you're technically detained, you're not incarcerated, um, have there been some uh, global pandemic come up? Yes, sir. Um, Sometimes called COVID-19? COVID-19, Corona, yes, sir. How has that impacted your time in the detention center? Thankfully, I mean, that I know of, we've had no outbreak per se in our pod. Um, we have in the jail, and that has affected some of the staff um, where they've had a good bit of rollover and things of that nature. As far as directly inside the pod, hasn't really affected me. But it's been a fear. Oh, yeah. Okay. Most definitely. And in fact, do you know whether at least one detention center, off, detention center officer died of COVID during the pandemic? At least one, unfortunately. All right. Um, do you have any power uh, as a pretrial detainee in protective custody to protect yourself against COVID-19? No, there's not. Um, they give us a mask. All right. Um, I believe did you testify previously about your health conditions? No, I haven't testified yet, I don't believe. Okay. Uh, as we sit here today, you, you have no acute health concerns, am I correct? Right now, <clears throat> the only concern will be my blood pressure, and it is managed right now. All right. There have been times in the past when it was not managed as well? Most definitely not managed as well. Um, it's probably just now got, you know, probably in the last eight weeks, six to eight weeks, where it's managed. <laughs> Um, let me ask you about visitation. Okay. okay. Uh, as a pretrial detainee in protective custody, do you have any in-person visits with family, friends, ministers? No. Uh, let me rephrase that. Do you know what a contact visit is? Yes, I do. Are you permitted, con have, since you've been detained, or since COVID started last year, have you been permitted any contact visits with friends or family or your pastor? Just my lawyer. Uh, I take it that's me? That's correct. Unless you're hiding somebody from me. Okay. Um, has it been difficult for you not to be able to have any physical contact with members of your family since your arrest? Uh, yes, most definitely. And when they do visit, how many hours a week are they able to visit you? On the monitor? Well, on the monitor. First, let's tell the judge about the monitor. Well, I mean, I, when I first got there, I need to back up a little bit because I was in medical isolation and I'm not exactly sure why I was there because medical issues weren't a factor at that point, but I stayed there for three months. At that point, I had non-contact visitation, which is through the glass. And then, like when you say glass, you're like old-fashioned glass, like a window. Yeah. With a telephone. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, and then what happened? Through about three months down the road, I got put in the pod, um, protective custody pod. So that caused visitations to go to the video monitor. All right, so basically you're seeing folks on a video that are at a remote location in the jail. Correct. And you get I don't leave the pod there in the visitation center. Right. And how many hours a month can you do that? How many hours a week can you do that? Twice a week, 15 minutes each. All right. And other than your lawyer, that's basically the limit on your contact with the outside world? Yes, sir, it is. Other than phone calls? Phone calls, yeah. Okay. As long as you pay for them, you can make all the calls you want. Right. All right. 
Um, while you've been incarcerated, have there been issues with family and friends? Uh, yes, I mean, there's always issues with family and friends, so it hasn't stopped, yeah. Has it been difficult for you being detained all this time not to be able to participate in their lives uh, as they get sick or die or yes. have other life events? Yes, sir, most definitely. I have no further questions for Mr. Bryan. Okay, thank you, Mr. Steve. No, Your Honor. All right. That is all the evidence we wish to present, Your Honor. All right, record being closed. Any further argument on the um, motion for reconsideration? I'll, I was just going back over just to be clear, this motion for reconsideration, uh, the court entered an order on June 15th, 2021, and at the time, that was a relatively lengthy order, let's see, it's like a six, seven page, six page order, about five and a half page order, and in it specifically addressed the trial date scheduled for October 18th, which is the date that we began. Then went through all of the factors. And again, the evidence that we just heard simply addresses the uh, fourth factor, which is the prejudice. Um, so that being where we are, Mr. Goff. Your Honor, I'm not gonna re-argue uh, the Barker v. Wingo standards. I'm just gonna suggest to the court that with the passage of additional time, and the additional evidence presented with respect to hardship. Uh, I, the only real bone of contention I, I, would, I would have is the court seems to have limited the last factor, the prejudice factor, essentially to prejudice to the defense in court, uh, which is certainly the most weighty consideration the court's required to consider. But I, I would humbly suggest to the court that the constitutional standard is broader than that. It doesn't matter. You, you can still have a speedy trial violation even if defendants' substantive rights at trial are not impacted simply by the length or hardness <coughs> or other conditions of pretrial detention. I think that's clear from the precedents and I would humbly suggest that your court did not give adequate consideration to such issues in its original order and I would urge the court to perhaps address that issue, particularly with the additional evidence presented uh, in uh, what I presume will be a, a subsequent written order on the second plea of bar. Anything from the state? Your Honor, this is a motion for reconsideration of your order. There is nothing new here for the reconsideration. We've heard about the conditions at the jail, which are what everyone's experiencing out at the Glen County Jail. There is nothing new here, and his ability to prepare his case has not been impar impaired in any way. His contact visits with his lawyer, access to a telephone to talk as much as he wants, two times a week, 15-minute video conferences. Um, so at this point in time, none of this criteria takes us out of the Barker v. Wingo factors that were already decided. Um, and there are numerous factors and then the three parts for prejudice and this is only one of the parts and it's not even the part weighted heavily so mr goff has failed to or defendant bryan has failed to bring anything to this court for your reconsideration we ask that you deny the motion all right the um courts considered or, or i've read through the second plea in bar first the court notes that uh i mean technically it's untimely it's outside the term of court upon which the original order was entered. So as a motion for reconsideration, it would be untimely. That's uh, State v. Ross, 293 Georgia, 834 was actually a plea and bar case. Uh, but um, beyond that, the second plea and bar raises no additional issues. The first order, the first motion, was addressed through an order which specifically addressed the court date that uh, was the beginning date uh, for this trial, October 18th, 2021. We do have some additional information with regard to the fourth prong. The court's already addressed all of the other prongs and exactly how we got there, and having considered the evidence, 
presented here today uh, finds that uh, there is not sufficient prejudice to the accused under the fourth prong in order to grant the plea in bar. So I'll give the order of the court.